And now a few words from former Texas music promoter Tyrone Butcher. Howdy, folks. I'm here with uh, Joe, Joe Walmsley, on Expat Radio. And I've spent the afternoon with Joe here listening to some of his music and watching some videos that he has promoted on his music. The man has created some very entertaining material and it's been a joy to listen to him and uh i've known joe and his lovely wife now for and his little girl ava for several years and i finally had a chance to come in and observe what he's doing on the radio and i think that we are all fortunate that we're getting to hear this fine musician here in texas y'all enjoy it it's my buddy there tyrone butcher i met tyrone some years ago at the gym we've been friends ever since and a week ago, last Saturday, he came round to our place and he brought his granddaughters to swim with my daughter. And uh, we spent the afternoon here and we did a little interview while he was here because uh, it was Paul McCartney's 80th birthday. And Tyrone uh, shared a little story of how he spent some time with Paul and Linda um, in the late 70s in London. So I'm going to play you that interview. So today, June 18th, 2022, it's uh, Paul McCartney's 80th birthday. And I've got a friend of mine here, we're going to have a little chat. This is Tyrone Butcher from Texas, y'all. Thank you, Joe. You know, I want to kind of reminisce on, on, on a great experience that I had, one of many that I've had fortunate enough to live through. But back in 1979, I was visiting with my brother. My brother and his family were living in London in an area called Clampham North. And... Um, it turned out that in the last two or three years that they'd been living there, Linda, my my sister-in-law, and her little her baby, her little niece Nicole, Sochil Nicole, had spent a lot of time with Paul and Linda McCartney and became their rose girls. It's fabulous. So, and Linda had all mapped out everywhere during the course of a day when Paul and Linda were were in London. My Linda knew where they'd be driving past and everything else, so she had her corners picked out. And it was kind of a fun thing that we used to do. But I got a chance to meet with Paul and Linda at EMI International, EMI Studios. They're on Abbey Road. It's fantastic. And what was so really uh, great is how real Paul and Linda how real of people they they were they are and um, it was just it was just a great experience tying along with this experience of meeting paul and linda on several occasions as a matter of fact we went to a little town outside of london called henley henley is where george harrison has his place called friar park and it's a beautiful, large, about a 60-acre estate, three entrances. There's a gatehouse in each entrance, which are big rock homes. They're not little cottages. But in the center is a beautiful big castle. And um, I felt that J George would be there because that same weekend, Ravi Shankar was playing uh, the Smith's and Smith's Odium, and he was playing there that weekend. So I mentioned to Linda, you know, chances are uh, Ravi Shankar being here, George and them will be at at his home. So we took a train ride to Henley, and we spent some time in one of, in front of one of the main gatehouse, around the main gate, hoping that we're going to maybe as fans see George come out or in or, and it was unique because out comes. In, in a um, Land Rover, out comes George's brother. So he was telling us, look, y'all hang around. You're welcome to hang around. George went out to, to buy a new car, but he'll be driving through. So it turned out that a few minutes later, here come two Porsche, beautiful cars, and they drive up, and George was in the lead car, driving the lead car. Well, Linda, my sister-in-law, was no stranger to George and Paul and John and Ringo. She was one of the Apple Scruggs, yeah. very well known. Uh, these are four young girls that hung out in front of Apple Corporation for a couple of years. They were there day and night, diehards. They were there right there with the Beatles day and night. So George and, and um, 
my sister-in-law, they got to reminiscing, and we could understand the circumstances. George had a very personal friend. They had a, a very private situation going with Ravi Shankar, but he was very gracious. So we didn't get the opportunity to spend a lot of time with George. I was hoping, of course, to go in and be there in the castle, but you know, you not you don't always get what you want. But the brief visit was really wonderful. Great, great experience. So I wanted to share that with with Joe here, my brother, and and maybe you folks. It was just a, a nice experience. So I'm going to turn it over here to Joe. And well, I was McConaughey. I was McConaughey. I was the guy. Well, uh, I can tell you this. One afternoon, when we we had spent some time at EMI Studios with Paul and Linda, and when we got home, my Linda. My sister-in-law was telling me, Tyrone, you don't realize it because you're, you're, you're excited, which I was. Every time I got around Paul, it was, you know, it was unreal. To me, it was unreal. But Paul would get into his Texas accent, and he'd be conversing with me in a Texas accent. It just kind of showed you what, you know, this is a, a, a person who enjoys life, enjoys being with people, and it was just a great situation. I didn't snap until Linda told me that that night what was going on, and it just blew my mind. It was fantastic. But as a person, and Miss Linda McCartney, they were just very thoughtful. You know, they were they're fantastic. And uh, so, was, to me, it was, a, it was I can understand why the Beatles were the Beatles. You know, they were personable people. Paul was fantastic. Linda was fantastic. Hey. Long live the Beatles. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, Tyrone. But before you go, just tell us a little bit. that You actually did an album with Willie Nelson, right? Well, I was very fortunate to spend several years with Willie and the family at many of the shows that he did. And uh, it took a while, but at that time, I was very close to many of the local San Antonio musicians who had already risen to their star status over the years. But I was with J.R. Chadwell, the godfather of Texas Swing. You folks out there all remember the great Cotton Eye Joe. Well, J.R. on five-string fiddle recorded the Cotton Eye Joe back in 1938. So as the years went on, he was recognized by a lot of the top, mostly country musicians, as the godfather of Texas Swing. Bob Wills was a godfather of of, of Western Swing, and um, so I was able to spend s- some time, quite a few, about three or four years with Willie and the family, and at one point, we got some of the local, we got Doug Soms together with Augie Myers, of course, J.R. Chadwell, and the great Jackie King, a left-handed jazz guitarist that was unbelievable and several other top-notch musicians, all well-known at the time, especially within the musical world. And uh, I helped co-produce an album, J.R. Chatwell and Friends. Willie played on it. Willie sang on it. Great experience to be around these, you know, incredible musicians. Johnny Gimble was our fiddle player. Johnny Gimble at that time, over a stretch of, I'm just going to say around 18 years, 14 years, he was instrumental, instrumentalist of the year in the country awards. I mean, he was always getting the instrumentalist of the year. Beautiful man, great musician. And um, so I was very fortunate to be part of that album. And it's kind of a highlight in my life. And uh, so I guess I'm bragging again, but <laughs> Joe started it, not me. Here we go. <laughs> Tyrone, but everybody, thanks for joining us.